Welcome to the Black 4 video in the series. This will be much like the last one because, uh, as you'll see very soon, it's uh, very similar in uh, the layout, not particularly video worthy. And uh, with that, let's just get started. Uh, so here again, this like much like the last one, has a number of sort of first aid issues uh, that are discussed. You got to research and provide your notes for. So it starts out with the hypothermia. Uh, dehydration and shock and like before you're just uh, providing a uh, picture of your notes Ta -da. so nothing particularly special there and then it goes on to poisonous plants animals and insects and this is a little bit of a minor nitpick here but uh, you know this is supposed to be like an educational sort of uh, you know exercise uh, and I hate that they're using the word poisonous in there. That's not the right word. A poisonous animal is one if you eat it, you get poisoned. A venomous animal is one that if it bites you, you are envenomed. So that's a minor nitpick, but I hate that uh, they're using the wrong word there. And as for insects, I don't think they mean insects. I'm not, I'm trying to think of venomous insect. Um, at least venomous, like a danger to human. And off the top of my head, I can't think of any. They mean they mean spiders. They mean arachnids. Uh, so this really should be rewarded. Um, here I chose. Uh, there's three uh, different rattlesnakes in Colorado, so I chose to kind of research them deeper and uh, learned learned a bit in the, in the process. This is the most common one: the prairie rattler. And then I got some notes. <laughs> I'm supposed to I'm supposed to draw it. Uh, let's see down here and then you got poisonous plants so again I chose a uh, um, Colorado someone you could find in Colorado we got some pictures of it here and this water hemlock is extremely poisonous and it's also kind of related to some uh, non poisonous edibles so it's it's a good one to learn to be able to recognize and there's my notes moving right along Module three, water and fire. Uh, this again, much like the others, I, I'm just kind of actually realizing now that I just sort of wrote, typed it in here. But um, I wanted uh, ways to purify water, and uh, you know, boiling. I'm sure they get tired of heating about boiling. It's probably the one everyone picks, or uh, you know, putting bleach or iodine in the water, or maybe. Um, uh, some of those makeshift like sand and gravel filters that you can make that I have a suspicion don't actually work at all. <clears throat> so I actually found something that was totally different and this is a way some scientists have found to filter water using the xylem of coniferous trees as the filter element. Uh, so I kind of wrote that up. I think that's really interesting. They probably haven't seen that before. Uh, it was new to me, um, but that's yeah, that's, that's really cool. Uh, so that's what I chose, wrote it up, and got a link to the, the full article. And collecting water using a bandana. This is another another example of an exercise I think was just sort of insufficient. What they want you to do is research the correct method for collecting water using a bandana and you deliver a photo. Okay, so all you really need to do is have this photo of you like walking through wet grass. And it collects on the bandana and then you can squeeze the bandana out in your mouth or your like water bottle. But this really isn't sufficient to uh, you know to sort of explain how it goes about because there are caveats with that. And even even in Dave Canterbury's video, he doesn't really discuss the caveats here. So I've actually included that. Um, you know, this is kind of the, the basics of how it works, but actually this is the more important part. So, you know, take some effort to make sure you're not collecting off of, say, that water hemlock or the poison hemlock. Um, uh, or if there's a chance that they've been chemically treated or sprayed, or you know, you're in some farm field where animals have been uh, relieving themselves near roadsides where they got you know 
uh, automobile pollution, kind of like coating them. And and then last but not least, there's this fire triangle idea: fuel, oxygen, and heat. So you can, if you're moving either any one of these, you know, the fire goes out. Um, a little bit of a weird thing to have in this, um, but that's it. So, oh no, I'm sorry. After this, there's the uh, correct method of constructing a tender bundle. Bundle. Uh, so it's a real quickie, you know. But got a few notes there on how to do that from uh, one of Dave's videos. And now that's it. Yep, got my little bibliography there. Uh, so this was a a quick, this is a quick video, just kind of going over the basics, what it looks like, what I'm turning in. Um, the other update that I would like to add is it's been a month since I submitted block three. And when I did that, I had some questions for the examiner. And uh, I would like to say I haven't received any response back uh, from him. So the original examiner who looked at my block one and two stuff, I never heard if I passed. I assume I did. And the guy who's take, took an, taken over has also assumed I passed, but I wanted a confirmation because, you know, maybe that guy never even got him. Maybe they went to a, I mailed him and they went to his junk folder and he's never seen him. Um, so I haven't gotten that confirmation. It's been over a month since I've asked for it. Um, I've also asked uh, some, for some advice on flint and steel fire making because I've been trying it on a couple different like tinder materials and while I can get sparks sparks just bounce around and don't do anything so I've asked again uh, for some you know if he's got some tips or something that he can share and I haven't heard back from the original ask and I'm not expecting to hear back uh, you know this time either um, although he at least you know, maybe in a week's time will uh, let me know that this one passed. But, uh, yeah, so it's disappointing. Like I said there's really no, there's no back and forth. There's no, like, you know, they're not there to answer your questions and, and like, help you out. You just turn in your stuff and get a check mark. Um, my experience so far. No, well, that's it for this video. Um, the second video I've, or the, the, the next block, which is block five I've already started it's it's your fire making um, which again is why I was starting to ask about the flint and steel uh, so I'm not sure when I'll get that one out um, especially if I, if I can't uh, create fire with flint and steel um, the three methods they have you use is uh, flint and steel uh, solar and uh, using a fire steel or ferro rod so uh, I don't want to get too deep into that because that's the next video but um well, such as it is. Over and out.